Hi, it's Lynn Rowe here and I'm going to show you how to make the little candy canes here that form part of this strip of bunting. I'm going to show you how to make the individual pieces, including this little bow, and how to sew it all together so that you can make your own strip of bunting or you could, if you wanted to, hang these individually on your tree or around your house. And this pattern is from my Fairy Tale Blankets to Crochet book. And each blanket in the book has a little strip of bunting to match. And so this bunting strip matches the Christmas blanket. And you will have the pattern to print off so you can actually um, check it and follow it at your own leisure. But I'm just going to show you the stitches that are involved in making it up. It's really simple to make and all you need are some oddments of yarn. So um, white for the main um, cover of the candy cane and then the red twirly bit to go round it and then the green is the bow. But you could actually use pink or blues or you know you could make it any colours you want. You don't have to do traditional um, festive colours if you don't want to. Um, but all you need as I say is some oddments of double knitting yarn a four millimetre crochet hook to match the um, weight of the yarn, a pair of scissors, a wool needle and also some straws. If you can find bendy straws um, then that would be good. I think you can get cardboard bendy straws in the shops now. Um, these are really old straws that we've had in the cupboard for maybe about 10 years so I was quite glad to find them and try and use them up. Um, but you can use a chenille stick if you wanted to or you could fill them with toy filling as well but as long as you can kind of bend them a little bit at the top then that'll be fine. And so what I'm going to show you is the individual elements that make up the candy cane. And basically it is just strips of double crochet so each element is exactly the same. The white strip is a little bit deeper so that's five rows of double crochet. The red twisted part that goes around the main cover is just one row of double crochet and it's a longer strip and the pattern will tell you how many chains to work so don't worry. And then the green is another single row of um, double crochet so just one row of double crochet and I'll show you the best way to make this uh, bow nice and flat. So if we start off by making a start on the white um, cover so if you take your crochet hook and take the white yarn I'll just move those away for now Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a slip stitch. So you wrap wrap the yarn, so hold the tail of yarn in front of your fingers, just pinch it with your thumb and your finger. Wrap the yarn from the ball around your finger and cross it over and then just put your thumb on where it's crossing and just grab that little tail of yarn that's coming from the ball there. So you've got two strands of yarn on your hands. You're just going to poke your crochet hook under the first strand and pull the second strand through to make a loop on your hook. Remove your fingers and then tighten up this loop by pulling on the tail end of yarn. And then if you pull the yarn from the ball, it'll tighten it up on your hook. Okay, so I'll do that again. So hold the yarn with the tail dangling in front, wrap it around your fingers and cross it and then grab the yarn. So you've got two strands under the first strand, grab the second strand and pull it through and then pull on the tail ends to tighten up that slip knot. Okay, you might have your own way to make a slip knot, that's absolutely fine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hold the yarn in our hands and take it over our index finger okay so that we've got a strand of yarn that we can put our hook underneath and you're just going to pinch the knot just below the knot with your thumb and your middle finger okay so then we're going to start by making a chain and for the white strip we're going to make a chain of 29 so we put the hook underneath that strand of yarn and then 
grab the yarn under the hook and pull it through the slip knot. Okay, and you've made one chain. Can you see there? We've made a chain. And we repeat that process, put the hook under the yarn and then pull the yarn through the loop on your hook. And we've made another chain. And we just keep doing that. Put the yarn around the hook and then pull down and through the loop on your hook. That's three. And if we keep doing that, that's four, five, six. And then just get a bit more yarn from the ball. And always keep holding right underneath your hook with your middle finger and your thumb because that gives you a little bit more control over your crochet. So we've got seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and we need 29. So we'll do another 19. Sorry, getting a bit stuck there. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now I've got 20. I'm going to do another nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now we should have 29 chain. Okay. What we're going to do now is to work a double crochet into each chain all the way to the end. So you skip the first chain that's directly under your hook you don't work into that chain, you find the next chain along and you push your hook in just into the centre of the chain and again you put the yarn over the hook and you pull it back through the chain and so now you've got two loops on your hook and you put the yarn over and pull it through both loops together and we've made one double crochet and we repeat that all the way along into every single chain Poke your hook into the centre of the chain, pull the yarn through the chain so that you've got two loops on your hook, yarn over and you pull it through two loops. We do that all the way to the end, so in, pull the yarn through one, pull the yarn through the two. In with your hook, pull the yarn through one loop, pull the yarn through two loops. And that's it all the way along. So in, yarn back, through two. However way you want to tell yourself how to make the stitch is fine. This is just how I do it. I say in, pull back through, and then pull through two. You could say go in, pull through one, pull through two. However, um, it helps you to remember what to do quite good to get a little mantra going because it really helps and it helps you to switch off as well and just relax that's the really good thing about crochet is that um, you know it's good to switch off and relax too because you are focusing on counting you're focusing on your hands and checking what they're doing and so whilst you're doing that you tend to switch off from you know from everything else that's going on so I'm just going to carry on until I get to the end. I'm not going to make the whole piece because, it, well, it would take too long and, um, you know, you'd probably get really bored. So what I'm doing is I've got one double crochet in every single chain. Make sure that you don't accidentally miss the next chain and then, you know, you're going to end up then with less stitches than you need. And it might just be a little bit too short. I mean, it's not critical, to be quite honest, because you can always snip your straw to fit. But try to, to make sure that you go into every single chain and make your double crochet. We're nearly there. Okie dokie, nearly at the end. So when you've worked into the final chain with your double crochet... With the red piece and with the green piece, we would fasten off now we'd cut the yarn and pull it through this final stitch but with the with this white piece we have to work five rows of double crochet so when we get to the end 
we make one chain, so put the yarn around the hook and pull it through to make a chain. You can see there that we've made a chain. We then ignore that chain on the next row. It's just to help your hook to be in the right position so that you can start the next row. So you skip that chain that you just made and you put your hook into the first stitch and make sure you go underneath the top of the stitch so that it's kind of like two little bits to the stitch. There's two strands there. It looks like that. Can you see the V's of the stitch? You slide your hook under both of them. So you slide your hook in, you put the yarn around the hook and you pull it back through the stitch. So again, you've got your two loops on your hook, you put the yarn over and you pull through. So you repeat that all the way along in every single stitch. Slide the hook under the top of the stitch, yarn over and pull it back through, yarn over and pull through two loops. And so now we're working the second row of double crochet and we're going to do that all the way to the end okay so when you've finished you will end up with five rows of double crochet so it'll be approximately two and a half centimeters long okay and then you cut the yarn and you just pull so I'll show you actually with this one, if I pretend we're at the end, you just snip the yarn. Actually, I've left a really long piece of yarn, but I'm not going to do that here. So cut the yarn from the ball. To fasten off, you just take the yarn around the needle and pull it through the stitch as if you're making a chain, but then just keep pulling all the way through and then just pull tight and you've fastened it off. Okay, so... This is the finished piece and now I'm going to show you how to um, sew this around the straw. Okay, let's move those out of the way. So with the straw, what we're going to do is we're going to, um, sorry, I'll just snip that bit of knot there. We're going to take one of our straws, okay. Now this end is quite long here and we don't want it to be that long. Really, we probably only want it to be about so maybe snip off about one and a half centimeters okay so i'm going to do that i'm just going to snip that end you can always snip it a bit more later but can you see now that that looks a lot better and then equally it's way too long so i'm just going to snip about two centimeters off the bottom to begin with i can always snip a little bit more off later so snip your straw to, to size if you need to or your chenille stick or whatever you might be using and hopefully now it's about the right length which it is that was a good guess wasn't it so take your white strip of crochet and fold it around the straw okay it should just about meet there shouldn't be too much of an overlap it shouldn't be too loose it doesn't matter really if it's too loose the problem would be if it was too um too small and then the ends wouldn't meet but crochet is quite stretchy so you might find that you'll be able to stretch it around so take your wool needle next okay and thread the end of yarn if you haven't left enough yarn from the main piece don't worry you can just use a separate piece of yarn it's not critical really we're going to start at one end of crochet okay and I'm literally just going to over sew these ends together so I'm just sliding my needle underneath the very end stitches and pulling through okay going to the next two sets of stitches can you see and just pull it through you don't really have to be that neat to be honest because you can't see the stitches because it's the same colour yarn. So just keep going all the way along by putting your needle underneath those very end stitches. Okay, and that is going to close up around the straw. And create a cover for the straw so you won't see the straw at all or whatever you're using if it's a chenille stick it'll all get covered up it doesn't necessarily matter if it's not white but 
I wouldn't go with a too much of a dark colour because you might then see it through the crochet. So just as pale as possible is a good idea for whatever you're using for the inside of your candy cane. So what we'll do is we would carry on all the way to the very end, just sewing it together. Okay, I'll do a little bit more. I'm sure you've got the hang of, of what I'm doing now. Okay. And when I get to the end, it'll all be covered like that and then you can bend the straw because it's bendy. So that's starting to look quite good now, isn't it? Quite a bit like um, it should. So, I don't think I need to carry on with that. So what I'm going to show you next is how to wrap the red little strip of crochet around this straw covered cane. I'll just carry on a little bit more so that I can at least show you how how to sew the red bit on. Now you can um, sew the individual bits on. You do have to sew this part but if you wanted to use a glue gun to um, stick the red strip on you could do. You don't necessarily have to sew it. I just find that I quite like the process of sewing again. It's something that I find really therapeutic, especially when, you know, life's a bit busy. Sometimes it's nice to just make something that's a little bit fun and, you know, just something nice and creative that you can show off and hang around your house and just, you know, add a bit of festive cheer. I've actually managed to sew that to the bottom now. That wasn't too boring, hopefully. And then what I'll probably do at the end here is sew up the bottom strip. You could either gather the stitches or just over sew the ends together so that the straw doesn't fall out. So just kind of close it up as best you can there. Okay, so that the straw's fully enclosed. And there we've got our little candy cane. Okay, so the next thing is to make your strip of red, which is a longer strip of crochet. So I think the white piece, we started with 29 chain, which gave us 28 double crochet. But with this red piece, we're going to start with 40 chain, okay, which then gives us 39 double crochet. And so again, leave an end, quite a long end, and I'll thread that onto my wool needle again. I'll just show you a little bit of this because this could take a while. I took my time with this and I, you know, you're going to start at the top, just have a little play with it before you start sewing it in place and make sure you can pull this quite tight that you start to wrap it round all the way round to create um, this sort of nice striping effect. And then maybe once once you're happy, it's not very difficult to do, but can you see there? I think that looks quite nice, doesn't it? You can either start sewing this in place by using this tail end of yarn and just use little running stitches. They don't have to be anything fancy, but if you sew through the red, you won't see your stitches. But alternatively, if you wanted to, you could stick this on with a glue gun. So... I'm just going to show you, try to start just almost at the back. Okay, right. So I'm going to come through the white and up through the red just to connect them together. Okay, and then I'm just working from the top and I'm just going through both layers as best I can. And it doesn't matter if the stitches are quite long really. Then I'm just going to come out somewhere else a bit further along, maybe like about half a centimetre along. Just as small as you can make it. And then just follow this all the way around doing small running stitches and making sure that you go through both layers so that you connect them together. Okay. Just twirl it round as you go. 
like I say, the great thing about this project is that you don't have to be a super neat sewer. You don't have to have loads of sewing experience because all you're doing is little over sewing stitches and little running stitches. Just keep everything flat as you go. You can see I'm not even, you know, bothering too much as to whether my stitches are all the same because you just can't see them through the double crochet because double crochet is quite bumpy anyway so you can't see these big stitches that you're making quite difficult to keep them tiny and that's what you do all the way around and then when you get to the end yeah just fasten it off and there you've got your covered little strip just get all those out of the way so what at the end then you would weave all your red bits of yarn just you know lose them inside the strip um, and if you close up that end as well that white end so that the straw doesn't poke out so that's how we've attached the red twirly bits I'm not really sure the, the peppermint bit I suppose it is isn't it and so it's starting to look more and more like um, a candy cane, isn't it now? Okay, so I think the next thing to do is to show you how to make the little bow. Because that's a bit trickier. But it does start off with just the strip of crochet again, exactly the same. We start with a chain of 27 for this one could do it a little bit longer if you want to but but don't worry this will make a little bow because we're not tying it in a bow because if we wanted to tie it in a bow we'd have to make it a lot longer and then it would be a lot more bulky and we don't want it to be bulky we want to try and keep it as flat as possible so that we can make a little bow like that and if you have a look at the bow you can see that around the middle is some yarn that I've wrapped around and that's how I've made the bow. I haven't tied it into a bow. Okay, so following the pattern, you will chain 27 and then you will double crochet back along the chain to give you 26 stitches. Okay, and then what we're going to do is, it doesn't matter which side you choose as the front or the back. I think looking at this, I've possibly chosen the back to be the front there so the more of the bumpy part is is facing me as I make the little bow shape but before we do that we just need to take a little section of green yarn so I'm going to cut off about 30 centimeters of green yarn maybe a little bit more maybe like 45 centimeters okay and then I'm going to take my little strip of green just move everything out of the way so you can see a bit better and now this is a, the most fiddly bit I think you're going to make a couple of little folds in the in the green strip of crochet but try to make them equal so that the the bits on either side that are going to form the ends of the bow so that they look roughly the you know the same size so maybe that's looking okay there isn't it and then what I'm going to do is I've crossed I've just folded that half there so I've made one fold just hold on to that as you make another fold and then cross those ends so that the one's sticking out in one direction and the other is sticking out in the other like that and then I'm going to take my long piece of yarn and start wrapping it round the middle quite tight. Okay, just keep wrapping it round. The more you wrap it, the more you can sort of start letting go because everything's been held in place now by this yarn that you're wrapping around the center. And you'll find that if you need to, you can just pull things around a little bit to make sure that your bow parts are all nice and even. So if you think your bow isn't big enough, you can just give them a little tug before you go any further. And then just keep wrapping around until 
you've got a nice little amount of yarn in the centre. Okay, and then I'm just going to tie these two ends together on the back. And then what I did was to keep this all nice and flat. So I've tied those together at the back and then if you take your wool needle, I'll just get it off the, the red yarn there. Just I never snip. When I've made a knot in yarn, I would never just snip close to the knot. I always weave the end through. So just take the ends and just weave it through the back just a little bit and pull it through and then you can snip like that. That's one gone. And then do the same for the other side. Just thread it onto a piece of it onto the wool needle and then just weave it through and pull. Pull quite tight. And then I will do the same for these ends as well. Maybe tie those together. There we go. And then thread onto the wool needle and then just weave. That's the back, isn't it? I was losing which was the back just weave along the chains I just over sew like that until I get to the middle and then just weave it underneath the knot in the middle and then you can just cut it and all of a sudden once you've got rid of all these little straggly ends it's starting to look quite nice there isn't it it's starting to look like it should so, also what I tend to do is to use spray starch and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So I'm just going to weave those under. And then snip. This probably is the bit that's going to take the longest. Is making these little uh, these little bows. You you could leave them off if you wanted to, but I just think they add a really nice little pop of colour, don't they, on the green. So then when you pop it onto your candy cane, it's you know it looks really pretty, doesn't it? But what I would do with those, or what I did do with mine, was that I pinned them flat onto um, a towel or whatever um you know something like um, a blocking board but you don't have to have a blocking board you could just fold a towel up and pin it flat and then i used some spray starch and i just spray it all over the back and then just leave it to dry completely and what that does is it stiffens it up so that these little ends don't start to just curl up and it all looks a bit um you know a bit curly so that's what I tend to do. I use spray starch and that really helps. And then once you've done that, you can sew it with some green yarn onto the candy cane. Okay. And so now we are getting towards finishing, aren't we? So you would make maybe seven or eight of those for a strip of bunting, maybe nine. Uh, just as many as you want really but I think one two three four five six seven I've got seven on mine um, and in the pattern in the booklet seven fitted onto this really long strip of double crochet so I think the pattern says to crochet 161 chain and then work one double crochet in each chain which gives you 160 stitches and then you work a second row of double crochet. You can see that one's folding up a little bit there. And then once you've got your strip, you can place your um, little candy canes evenly or as close as you want to 
and then in between each candy cane I stuck a little bow. I think I used a glue gun to stick those on. I can't remember. I think I might have sewn some on and maybe glued others on. But you can you know you can sew them on, you can glue them on, and then every so often we've got a little bow in between and then another another candy cane and then that makes up the bunting but if you wanted to you could just put a little hanging loop into the top and then you could hang them onto your tree or you could just use the bend in the candy cane itself to hang them over a tree branch and that's it that's how you make the candy cane it is simply strips of double crochet made into little individual sections remember you've got the white section to cover the straw you've got the red section to twirl around like that and then you've got the little green strip of crochet to make the bow and that's it that's how you do it and you can print the pattern off and make your own at your leisure and if you've got any problems you can email me too and then I'll help as best I can. So I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope you make some nice candy canes to brighten up your home over the festive season. Thank you, bye bye.